Good morning. I welcome you all in the name of our risen Lord Jesus Christ. I'm Pam Anderson, the pastor of congregational care here at Beulah, and this is one way we live into our vision of worship, by seeking the Lord and seeking relationship and communion with each other. Another way that we live into our vision of sharing and serving, you can find some information in the bulletin. There's many opportunities for us to engage with each other and our community. You can also check out our calendar online. I'd like to welcome you whether you're a longtime member or if this is a first time visit for you and also welcome the people that are joining us online. So I do want to raise attention to a couple of announcements, not all of them, so peruse on your own. The first is Operation Christmas Child. They have shoe boxes you can find out in the narthex this is a way that we spread the word of Jesus to children in hurricane-ravaged and underdeveloped countries. If you fill a shoebox, you can return it, and the children can open it at Christmas time. I also want to remind you all about our trunk or treat. We've been talking about that a little bit, and if you could share, spread the word with your community and friends and family with children, it is a nice way for us to offer a safe and interesting and fun um, uh, alternative to trick-or-treating door-to-door. It's going to be Sunday, October 31st at 6 p.m. You also, if you're interested in giving out candy, you can sign up and have a trunk and give out candy and interact, or you can just make a candy donation. We're still collecting candy until Wednesday, October 27th. And then we also have Beulah Care Team Information Session. So if you're interested in reaching out to others, either those that are needing a visit or just reaching out on a phone call, checking in on each other, please see us at 7 p.m. August 27th after Wednesday night supper. And now, let us prepare our hearts for worship. Good morning. Um, I would like to invite us to a call to worship at this time, so if me, I'll rise together with me. We're going to, I'm gonna lead us into this call to worship. Uh, the call to worship will be on your screen, so you, you, may, you will be able to follow along. Uh, just, just before we do, we just take a moment just to allow our hearts just to be in posture to worship. And I will lead us now into this time. Friends, let us worship God today, for God is great. God has blessed us with life, with faith, and with community. Let us worship God today, for God is good. God forgives us and encourages us to love and loves us. Let us worship God today. God is worthy of our praise, amen. At this time, we'll be, uh, if you may remain standing, we're gonna be voicing our praises now. In the Faith We Sing book, we'll be singing, My Life Is In You, Lord, and Father, I Adore You. It is 2032 and 2038. And so, at this time, let us give worship to our God.
say my life, yes, is in you, Lord. And Father, yes, we adore you. Jesus, we adore you. Spirit, we adore you. We thank you for just your love and your grace. We thank you that, you know, we just simply know that we are embraced by you. And so God, just fill our hearts today as we just continue to worship and hear your word. We thank you. We give all glory to you now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. And now let us take our prayers for the people to God. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we thank you for this opportunity to join together on this brisk, cool fall morning that you have made. We praise you, God, as you continue to show your presence and power in our lives with our answered prayers. God, help us be more attuned to recognize your gifts and have us share them as a testimony to your greatness. We give thanks, Lord, that we were able to bless our neighbors this week with 100 free meals. We pray we may continue to be blessed in our outreach opportunities. We bless you, Lord, for successful healing of those on our prayer list as we continue to ask for your grace and strength. We pray for strong healing mercies focused on Kathy Brand's leg, the aunt of Tony Spencer. Father God, we continue to lift up the Linton family in their grieving for the loss of Linda Linton. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers as we pray for strength and healing. Continue to pray for Joanne Baracco, Pam Toddy, Diane Kleiss, and David Burke. Healer God, we pray for all those dealing with loss and anxiety and addictions, and let us all turn our unnamed struggles in our hearts, Lord, over to you. We continue to lift up private prayers of others. We seek to surround those in our lives that are on our long-term care facilities or in hospitals, Lord, let them feel our love and care this morning, God. Open our eyes and minds and hearts to our responsibility to our brothers and sisters and the human family throughout the world, equally created by you, God. We pray thanks for school bands that are getting back together. We continue to pray for those in continued risk of COVID. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers as we become, come before you with these our requests as he taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Um, thank you again to just everyone here for just our choir, um, not our choir, I'm sorry, our bells, and our choir who's in the back here singing along with the voicing our praises. Uh, we thank you again for just the time of worship we have together. Uh, I would love to just uh, open us up with our scripture for today. It is Exodus 20, verses 12. We are continuing on our book series, The Ten Words to Live By, by Jen Wilkin. And today, uh, we do the fifth commandment, I believe, which says this in Exodus 20, verse 12. Honor your father and your mother so that your life will be long on the fertile land that the Lord your God is giving you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. All right. Um, once again, good morning. It is really good to see all of you here today. Um, I am here. Uh, Pastor Don is out of town. But, so to be honest, I'm super nervous. <laughs> I'm nervous, and I think some of you may feel it. I think the back, the choir may feel it. Um, I'm nervous for a couple of reasons. I think number one is just me just sort of being here and not just preaching where as I get nervous every time I preach. But today, especially, um, I am preaching on honor your father and mother. Right? It's a very commandment. It's a commandment that I really believe that it's one of the hardest commandments to preach on. And to be honest, I think it's the hardest for me because there's just so many different elements that goes into this commandment, honor your father and mother. But for me right now, as I stand before you, right, I'm looking at each of you and your eyes, and I see I'm this 27-year-old baby, right? I emphasize that again, I'm a baby, right? I don't have much life experience compared to some of you, right? This, this past week, I was honored to go to Springdale in, at Lucy Corps, and there was a gentleman who was 97 years old, and there was a lady who, who was 96 years old. And I did the math. Those two lived 3.5 times more than I lived. That's amazing, amazing. But I, I was thinking about it that, like, even if I lived 27 years three times, they're still older than me, right? That's, it's so for me, it's like, how do I preach on honor your father and mother after all the experiences that they've gone through in their life as parents, as grandparents, but also even some with the grace of being great grandparents. And then at the same time, I was like thinking, I'm not a parent right now, right? I have not yet, that's my prayer request, right? Not yet been graced the honor and the privilege of being a parent, right? Or a, child, uh, a parent of children. And, you know, even some of you are grandparents, right? I'm not a grandparent yet. It would be very problematic if I was a grandparent, right? <laughs> but. What I'm feeling is I feel a genuine nervousness, right? What am I supposed to say? What am I supposed to preach? How do we honor our parents? And at the same time, just being very frank and being honest, sometimes this commandment is very difficult to soak in and to swallow because how do we honor parents and our grandparents who may not have been the best parent or grandparent, just being very real with us? And so... I just, I, I feel like I have the honor and great privilege to preach this, but I share honestly that this might be one of my hardest. But I do believe in God. I believe in the Spirit. As the Spirit, I believe, will empower me right now to just preach this word. And who knows? Um, I believe that maybe it is a, this perspective as a young person who is not yet to be a parent that may have something to offer in this specific commandment for us. So allowing God to just open all of our hearts, uh, we, I, let me allow us to just share God's word with us today. And so today we've been going through this book by Jen Wilkins on the 10 words to live by, and we are in this very commandment, which is honor your father and mother, right? It's a commandment that actually takes a little bit of a shift, because if we uh, have been following along, the first four commandments all sort of pointed to God. Right? We talked about, right, you shall have no other God before me. We're talking about the Sabbath. But starting now, starting from commandment five, we have these commandments of how do we love one another, essentially. Right? Talking about love your father and your mother. Don't um, commit murder. Don't lie. Don't steal. Right? These are now all commandments about how do we live with one another. And so it's very interesting. But this commandment specifically is interesting for me personally because of two reasons. Number one is because I am Korean American 
and I'll go into that in a little bit. And two is because I'm young and I'm not a parent yet. And I'll go into that as well. But I want to start off first with because I'm Korean American, because there was something in the book. Jen Wilkin talked about how in, the, uh, in this particular chapter that uh, the people lived in a culture, that we live in a culture where, you know, it is seen that maybe elderly are not taken care of, that they're neglected. But for me, I actually disagree with that from my culture. Because in the, in, in the Korean American culture, for some who may be familiar, uh, it's rooted in the Chinese uh, history of Confucianism. And Confucianism, for some who may have learned in history or from social studies, it's this, it's this Eastern, East Asian belief that, in a nutshell, that all elderly are considered, if anything, they're like gods. So in our upbringing, in my upbringing, I actually was growing up that you have to treat elderly with like the utmost respect, that you cannot uh, you know, talk back to them, you cannot do anything to them, right? You have to listen to them, you must obey them, sometimes even blindly. And so I have sort of that upbringing, so it was kind of interesting as I was reading this book. But one of the things that made this commandment interesting for me growing up was it was that saying that, oh, they always said to me, oh, obey your parents or obey your elderly because I said so, right? Because God said so. Or, you know, there was sort of this cultural upbringing in that sense. And honestly, being Korean, but also being American, because I was born here in the United States, and, you know, there's that uh, uh, a lot of culture of freedom and freedom of speech and all of these things. I, I struggled a bit, right? How do I balance this uh, this Korean heritage of me, but also this American upbringing. And so I wrestled a lot. Why do I need to honor you? Why do I need to, you know, obey everything my parents say, right? And I personally, for me, the second reason too is because I'm young and being a millennial, and you probably heard that word many times over the years, being a millennial, you'll learn one thing about us is we hate doing something for no reason. There always has to be a reason. And I apologize if there's certain emotions that are coming out when you hear that. But for, even for me, I grew up with this. I fought a lot with my parents because they always told me to do something. But I said, why? Right? Why? Why? Why do I have to do it? And I know some of you may be feeling, oh my god, so many memories are coming out with my own children. But for me, I've always felt like I, there has to be a reason for it. And so I struggled a lot with this a particular commandment because it made me ask myself too, why do I need to honor my father and mother? Like, why is this so special? And I didn't, it didn't sit well with me or it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough justification where someone just said to me, because I said so, because God said so, because the Bible said so, right? It was a little difficult for me to soak that in. But I do believe our Bible to be you know, our authority. It, it is what we lean on and glean on. And so God did say, yes, honor your father and mother. And specifically, he says, honor your father and mother so that your life will be long on the fertile land that the Lord your God is giving you. And so as I kind of am having this honor of sharing this commandment, I explored this a little bit, right? What is it so about this commandment that is so important that God first gives us this commandment, and I ask myself, there has to be a reason why, right? There has to be a reason why we are called to honor our parents. And I'm not just talking about someone like me who's, you know, in, in my 20s and I'm not a parent yet, but even for some of you who are parents but still have parents, right? I can't imagine that balance you have, right? Being a parent yourself but still being a child as well. And so I, had, I explored it. You know, what is it about this commandment? There has to be a reason, right? Maybe there's something that parents do. Maybe something they have been given. Maybe an honor or some sort of responsibility. Something really important that God says, honor your parents. And so in that, I wanted to just kind of dive into our scripture. And as I was reading this passage, I think the highlight that I want to make is this part uh, this part specifically. It says, so that your life will be long on the fertile land that the Lord your God is giving you. Can I repeat that one more time? It's so that your life will be long on the fertile land that the Lord your God is giving you. I was reading that portion of our passage 
over and over again, and it made me question again, how does that connect with this honor your father and mother? Because if you go to the other commandments, there, it just simply says, like, do not murder, do not steal. But this one specifically says, honor your father and mother so that your life will be long. So, right? so there so, has to be this connection. And so I was thinking about it, and I was also, a couple of weeks ago, I was honored to share a passage from Deuteronomy as I was preaching that we must love the Lord with all of our heart, our soul, and our might. And then what was the instructions that God has given us afterwards? It said, impress them on your, oh, I apologize. Impress them on your children, right? Pass it on to your children. And believe it or not, that instruction is not just there once, but multiple times in Deuteronomy and even in the New Testament. So I made this connection. I wonder, the reason why God is sharing this commandment, honor your father and mother, right? And it's an important commandment. It's because I felt that when we understand the role of parents, especially in the church, as people who are called to follow God, I believe that God has given a great task to all parents, a great responsibility to all parents and even grandparents, a great responsibility that requires perseverance, it requires sacrifice, it requires a lot of great, uh, you know, just submission to God. And this great task, I believe, is passing on the Word of God to your children. I believe this commandment is so important because God wanted all parents and grandparents to see that they have been given a great responsibility to pass on the Word of God to their children. As God would say, impress the law onto your children, right? Make sure they know it. You tell them and when you're sleeping and when they're awake, when you're going on a walk, right? All of these scriptures, I think, connect to this commandment. Honor your father and mother because they have been given this great task of passing down the word of God, right? Who God is to your children, right? Once again, what this means is that parents and even grandparents, and even for some of you who are great grandparents, you have been given one of the greatest responsibilities by God. One of the greatest responsibilities. A great responsibility that requires intention, right? Being very intentional about it. Sacrifice, perseverance. A great responsibility that lasts until the last minute you live as a parent. And usually that is, right, until our last breath. A great responsibility that certainly deserves honor and why it's a commandment, and that is, again, passing the word of God to your children. Passing the word of God, impressing it onto your children. And actually, if we think about it a little bit deeper, this is actually very connected with a lot of the things we do in the life of the church. If you think about our baptisms, right, a lot of us have been honored to be part of infant baptism, you know, ceremonies, and many infants have come and gone through Beulah Church to be infant baptized. But if you remember uh, the infant baptism and the covenant that is made when the infant is getting baptized, what does usually the, the pastor do? They make a covenant to the parents. The parents are called to make a covenant to do what? That they will promise to nurture this child, not just physically and mentally, but spiritually, right? That spiritually they will be nurtured so that one day that they will be able to say for themselves, right, I believe in God. So actually, even in our baptism, there is this great responsibility that comes, right, that I will pass on the word of God to my children and to my, great ch uh, to my grandchildren. And in that, we actually start to see the weight of what it means to be a parent. You know, I, of course, like all of our parents, even take out the spiritual part, and they deserve so much honor, right? For all the parents here who wake up 2 a.m. in the morning when they're infants and, and dealing with a lot of crying and adjusting your life now to your kids because of schedules and stuff like that, right? That, that certainly deserves honor, too. But there is also this responsibility, this spiritual responsibility of passing on the Word of God. And I think that is why... Right? Parents deserve great honor. They deserve great honor. 
And so I think I just wanted to start us off by talking about this commandment just to see, actually to share with our parents the great weight and responsibility that you all have and to your children to pass on this word of God to them, to pass on the good news, who Jesus is and what Jesus has done for us and even passing on to them how we ought to live, right, as now those who follow Jesus. And this is so important for us to do this because I want to share with us in a real way, right, the consequences if we don't, but also the reward if we do. I want to start with the consequences because if this, if we see, if we live in a world where our fathers and our mothers or our grandparents are not passing the word of God to our children, there is a real reality, even in our scripture, that is very consistent, is that there is going to be a lot of sin that is part of their lives. Scripture is not shy of telling us the consequences of not passing on the word of God to your children. There's two major moments in the Old Testament where the Israelite people are considered to have entered the most darkest times of their history. This time was filled with difficulty, darkness. It was filled with corruption, sinfulness, injustice, so much more. It was considered the dark ages if, um, of their time. And it was first during the time of the judges. So actually not so long from the book of Exodus. Right? After Joshua passes away, they enter into a season of the judges. That is number one. And number two is during the time of the kings. When? They are before the season of the Babylonian exile, the moment that they are conquered by the Babylonians. These are the two moments in the Old Testament that the Israelite people go through the darkest times of their lives. But there is a consistency, there is a common denominator between these two seasons. There's a reason why that they have entered into these seasons. There is a reason why they have uh, begun entered this season and there's so much sin and corruption and this very reason is because they forgot the Lord. They forgot the Lord. It's in, our, it's in our scripture. Judges 3 talks about how they forgot the Lord. After Joshua passes away, they no longer remember the Lord. And I ask myself, why did they forget the Lord? Why did they forget? And I think a part of it was that the Israelite people at that time did not follow the commandment of passing the word of God to their children. And so ch their children did not know God. They forgot God. Do we now see the great weight of what it means to be a parent? That is not just the physical nourishment and the, uh, and the mental nourishment, but it is nurturing even spiritually to pass on the word of God. And it's because of that weight that I believe our fathers and mothers are called by children to honor them. Not just because the Bible said so or because I said so, right, but because there is a great responsibility that has been given to fathers and mothers, and children ought to honor that. At the same time, there's a great reward as well. There's a great reward if we do. And this great reward is simply, you know, this a future long generations of people who believe in Jesus Christ. A, f a long generation of people who will live like Christ. If we pass on the word of God to our children and you tell them to pass on the word of God to their children and that the cycle of faithfulness happens, you will see a reward, a generation. It's not a physical reward, but per se, it's a spiritual reward of generations, of long history of generations where people are faithful to God, right? They love one another, right? They understand this good news of Jesus Christ, that you are passing on the good news, right? Don't we want to pass on this good news of Jesus Christ to our children and not just to those around us, but especially to our children? In our New Testament, 2 Timothy talks about how if we receive the word of God from our children as a child, we are wise, right, for what the salvation of Jesus Christ means. As it says, but as for you, continue in what you have learned and I firmly believe, knowing from whom you learned it, right, and how from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. 
right? The reward is also your children living faithfully, right? Faithfully in the name of Jesus Christ. Galatians 5, 22 and 23 says that the fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. All these things, right, that we want to see in our children, right, even in our grandchildren. It talks about that these are the fruits of the Spirit, but passing on the Word of God, right, passing on the good news to our children is allowing the Spirit to work and, and uh, allow fruits to grow in our lives. So again, the role of the parent, there's a weight to it. When we pass on the Word of God to our children, right, the fruits of the Spirit are also seen in our children. And we, ex- we expect the same for their, your children to do the same to their children. There's a great reward when we pass the Word of God from generation to generation to generation. And quite, quite frankly, it's so beautiful Right? More than the amazing testimonies that we hear, of course, we don't, you know, it, they're amazing too. Um, I think an amazing testimony is when we hear that, oh, something like, I am the third generation of a faithful family who has committed their lives to Christ. Right? Our, like, for generation to generation, we have been so faithful to the church, right? So faithful to God. There is a great reward. And all of this highlights then. It highlights the important role that parents have and that all parents here deserve that honor when they see the weight of that responsibility that God has given you. In that sense, I want to conclude us by speaking and encouraging to all the parents and the grandparents here, but also even our children who are here today. Right? To all of our parents and to our grandparents, right, of all ages, right? I'm talking about of all ages, It doesn't matter if you're young or old. I want to conclude, uh, not conclude, sorry, to encourage you, fulfill this great responsibility that has been given to you. Fulfill this great responsibility. Continue to do it, to pass down the word of God to your children, to your grandchildren. Once again, it doesn't matter how old you are or or if you're done or, or if you feel like you're done, right, because your job is not done. I believe God is continuing to say, until your very last breath, right, pass down the word of God to your children and to your children's children. In our world, there's retirement, and I know many of us are enjoying retirement. But I believe as Christians, uh, this may not be the greatest thing to hear, but there is no such thing as retirement. Because even to to the ends of our days, we must live as Christians. We must live faithfully. Right? There is no retirement. And until your last birthday, I believe, because God's word is alive, the good news is active, we must continue to pass the word down to our children. At the same time, I want to encourage all of our children here today. And I'm not just talking to our children who are like my age or, or those who are younger who don't have parents or who are not parents yet, but even to our children here who are still children. Right, to our who may be a parent right now, but still our children. And even for some of you, right, where it may not be your biological father and mother or as a child, but even your spiritual fathers and mothers who are present here today. Right, so to all children, right, I want to encourage you, let us honor our parents. Let us honor our fathers and mothers. Honor our spiritual fathers and mothers, not because I said so, not because God said so, but because we as children have, are seeing this very important role that our parents, our spiritual fathers and mothers, our biological fathers and mothers have been given by God. We see it. We see this role that they have. This role, which is one of the greatest and even burdening responsibilities that they have. And when you see that, I believe it encourages us to really thank them, to give them honor. Yes, they may not be the perfect person. They may not have been the best, right? But we honor them for continuing to try, to continue to be the best that they can be. But even at the same time, I think there might be some of us who feel like it's still hard for me, realistically, it's so hard for me to honor my father and mother because 
they haven't been there for me or there's been a lot of brokenness. In that, I don't want to just simply say, just honor them because it says so or because God said so. But for me, in the courage that I have as the Spirit leads me right now, I want to say continue to honor them even amidst that brokenness, even amidst the struggles. Why? Because as you honor them, ultimately we honor them because we honor our Father in heaven. And as we honor our Father in heaven, what we are doing is as children, we are showing them the hope that they have as they know that there is a Jesus who loves them, a Father in heaven who loves them. By honoring our parents, even in the struggles, right, we are setting an example of the responsibility and the, the role that they ought to have. In that, I believe children are called to honor their parents, even if it is difficult. Because at the end of the day, it shows us, and Jen Wilkins also highlights, it, it allows us to be ready to ultimately honor the greatest father that we have our Father in heaven. And even Jesus would say that himself too, that before you could even forgive, uh, you to forgive, you have to forgive your brother and your sister, right? Like, you can't say that you love God and not forgive your brother or your sister. I believe it's the same thing, right? You, you cannot be able to honor your Father in heaven if you can't honor your parents here today. But again, it's not we do it because I said so, or God said so, but if we do it because we see the weight of their role, but at the same time, we as children can also set an example to our parents of the type of parents that God is calling them to be, and in that, there is hope. Even in the midst of brokenness and wrestles and struggles, there is hope, because God is good. And because through God, healing is very possible reconciliation is possible, right? And we believe in it and we pray. And I think it's in all of that, that is the reason why we are called to honor our fathers and mothers. With that, let us pray. Gracious God, we just thank you so much just for your word, this commandment that calls us to honor our father and mother, not because it is said or because I said so, but because, God, you show us the weight of what it truly means to be a father and a mother in this world. This responsibility of passing on the word of God to children and to the children's children. And as children ourselves, we do this because we see the greatest honor that we give to you, who you are the greatest father that we have. But also we do it because even amidst the struggles, even in our sinfulness, even if we're not perfect, we honor because we set an example of the hope that we have in you, Jesus. And so, God, show us your heart more and more as we continue to dive into these commandments. We give all glory to you now. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. With that said, if we could now all, uh, if we could rise together as we end this closing song together, we're going to sing, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. It's in our hymn books on number 89. And we're going to sing verses 1, 2, and 3.
the benediction. May God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God bless you all.